Hi all, welcome to Sanders Amps. On the workbench today, we have a Harmony Patrician, which is now in two pieces. Uh, it was in one piece when I got it, but the neck had a lot of movement in it, and uh, it looked like it was ready to fall off at some point, and uh, the guitar has seen better days, but it's a beautiful, this is actually a solid top, uh, and underneath here in the soundboard, there's a reinforcing bar of wood underneath. Uh, but some of the glue joints have come loose a little bit. We've got loose binding loose here. But really, the, the big job is resetting the neck. Uh, it came off very easily, I have to say. I got a spatula in underneath. We've got a little bit of a tail here. And, about the only thing that was holding this on was the, the glue underneath the, the uh, fingerboard here. So I got in there, I didn't even have to use heat on it. The glue was just cracking and uh, very dry. So uh, it came out pretty easily and then I found that there were two layers of sandpaper still in here. So somebody had jammed it in there, um, not really realizing, I suppose, that the, the sandpaper, it, it just didn't take, the glue didn't take at all. So somebody has done some kind of bad repairs on, on this guitar. I don't know if you can see this, but it's had a bad crack and it looks like somebody's smeared epoxy all over it, all the way around to, to reinforce it. Uh, and actually, it has stabilized it, so that worked. It's just not very pretty. It's pretty ugly what they did, but okay. The guitar has some life left in it. Um, nothing's rattling inside. We've got a few hairline cracks that have opened up, and uh, some are not moving. There's a crack here that's not moving at all. There's a crack here that's not moving at all. Uh, the Inside on the back here, we have a reinforcing bar, very thin, going all the way across the back. Uh, so I think this is a solid back as well. But I will endeavor to get inside here and and lay a very lightweight strip on the inside of this crack to, to reinforce that. Uh, what I've done here, once I clued, cleared all the glue off the joint here, it wasn't particularly snug, so I've put some shims, very thin, I didn't need much. In fact, it was so thin I used a hardwood veneer uh, and shimmed up each side, and that fits in there quite snugly at this point. Uh, it doesn't go quite all the way down, which is good, it's kind of tight, so uh, I've run out of carbon paper, I've got some carbon paper coming so that I can put that in the slot, press the neck down inside it, and then I'll be able to see where to start sanding it for the, for the best, snuggest fit. And this guitar will be ready to play again. The other uh, thing that I'm probably going to do here is this, this is rocking on the body here. It's, a, this is ebony, so this, there's been quite a bit of work done on this guitar over the years, I guess. So this is rosewood and ebony, so we've got a mismatched bridge here. And this is not fitting very snugly on top. It's rocking here, so I will do the old trick of putting some sandpaper on here. But as we move forward, it's patently obvious that there's a lot of play in this. So I'd actually like to try and find a, a bridge saddle that uh, has the two feet, one on either side, and has the arch in the middle so that it fits down quite snugly. Then I would have the problem though that it's pressing down on either side and the problem is we have a little bit of a, uh, a, a glue joint issue happening here so if I press down too much on either side it's going to start opening up those joints again. So I'll have to think about that, take that into consideration. Underneath the Underneath the saddle, which is screwed into the back here, I found some old drill holes. Uh, so it looks like somebody's traded out this, this saddle at some point and replaced it with uh, this one, which does not have holes in the top. 
and he has them in the in the heel. But this should go back together quite nicely with a little bit of glue and a bit of tender love and care. This uh, old beauty, it's an absolutely beautiful piece of work, has nice binding. Uh, there are some hairline cracks here that I will have to put a little tag inside to, to stop that split going any further. Um, another one down here. Uh, but this is absolutely going to be a real beauty and hopefully last a good long while yet. The old carbon paper trick showed me that I've got a little pressure spot here and then on the other side you can see it's right up here against the sorry it's right up here and that relates here it's tight here a little bit tight up there and then in here on this side it's tight down in here a bit hard to see in this light but I'll take a little bit off those those places and uh, the neck will sit a little bit straighter on the body and then we'll be ready to glue up. With a straight edge sitting on the frets and quite a snug fit on the neck here, I'm coming up a little low. I would like this to be sitting up higher so it's kind of sitting on top rather than right now it's about five millimeters below the saddle and uh, the problem with that is the saddle is as low as it can go so I would like to have a bit of play in that saddle in order that the action can be raised or lowered at this point, I mean, I could lower that action by taking some some wood off the um, saddle, so it would sit down lower. But when you get uh, when the action gets too low on any acoustic guitar, you lose some of the tone, you lose some of the punch and some of the bite of the guitar, and that'll happen on on any acoustic guitar. So higher action will always give you more bite and more punch in terms of tone. Uh, and what happens when the action gets too low is you kind of just get more of a percussive thin sound and, and none of the sort of bottom end comes through. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on this neck, uh, take a little bit off down here so that it, it's, it tilts back a little bit more. The straight edge shows that this heel has a little bit of a curve to it. Um, and where the binding is, is raised up a little bit. So I'm going to try and make that flat because it's that little rise there that's stopping the neck from sitting back how we want it. It might be quite hard to tell from this angle, but uh, you can see it's very tight up the top, near the top of the guitar. fairly tight at the bottom and in the middle we have about a mil gap so I'll sand away some of this down at the heel. This guitar has obviously been through the wars, it's got a lot of buckle rash going on but still I'm trying to preserve the finish here as much as I can, I don't want to be too hard on it. so. Just making sure with each pass, well, each couple of passes, that I'm clearing away any any grit from the sandpaper so it doesn't mark up the finish here. I got quite lucky as I've mentioned with this guitar in that the neck came off very easily and uh, once I shimmed it up it uh, slotted back in very tightly and very comfortably and having taken a little bit off the heel now I've got the neck angle where I want it 
So we're ready to glue up. I'm just using tight bond for this. Make sure I have plenty of glue. Handy. Being quite liberal with the glue here, I can cle clean up any squeeze out. I'm not too worried about this surface because it doesn't uh, make contact at all. And of course the outer bout here makes no contact, uh, is not glued either. This just has the normal original finish. Okay, here we go. Slot straight in. A little bit of squeeze out. Not too much. I did a dry clamp up before I applied the glue just to see how the neck would sit under pressure and it's fine it's exactly where I want it to be The neck's all nicely glued up, so I've replaced the tailpiece here and put down some tape here. I've got some double-sided tape on some sandpaper. I'm going to put this down pretty much where the bridge is going to sit. And now I can uh, seat this a bit more comfortably on the top of the guitar. It'll help with the transmission of tone. As I've moved the bridge back and forwards, I'm getting a pretty even amount coming off through here. Not so much right here, a little bit over here, but I'm getting close here. I don't want pressure on these outside pieces. Normally you kind of do on an arch top, but there's not much support underneath this and it's an old solid top. So most of the support is under the middle, so I'm going to give this a little bit more to get this this down a little bit here and uh, get this down here so that it seats across to about here is what I want it to be seated on the center support so there she is all set up and ready to go we've got a nice pretty good low action here plenty of room for adjustment mostly upward it could go down a little bit more uh, but it doesn't need to so the owner's going to be pretty happy with this, I think. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. Uh, the guitar is, uh, I've got it strung to D rather than E. It's standard tuning, but just a whole step down. So um, the owner can crank it up to E if he wants to see how, how long it holds together. Uh, it'll probably be fine, but I want to talk to him about the box itself. Uh, there are a lot of 
glue joints in this old beauty that are probably not that strong and uh, short of dismantling it entirely and re-gluing every joint um, which is probably nobody wants to spend that kind of money on it uh, it's probably better just to, to baby it a little and keep it tuned to an E flat or a, or a D uh, so that the life of the instrument will be prolonged. It seems to be very comfortable in a D, D tuning. So, But probably doesn't project quite as well with that level of tension on the strings. old neck on it like a baseball bat or maybe I'm just a lousy guitarist 